welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we'll talk about what the heck is C sky so before we dive right into uh, C sky we need to take a look at what an ISA is or instruction set architecture it's just a bunch of instructions or computer instructions uh, in machine language assembly um, that a machine language programmer or a compiler needs to know so basically to very different CPUs that have very different micro architectures can actually run the same uh, code and because they understand the same instruction set so for example AMD and Intel have fairly different micro architectures they are two separate companies working on their own projects but both of these are x86 or an x86-64 um, uh, capable machine so that's that means they understand the x86 and x86-64 instruction sets so similarly uh, even inside of Intel a uh, core to duo is completely different for a co from a core i7 but they understand the same basic x86 instruction set and that makes instruction set differ from what you call micro architecture so there are a bunch of instruction sets um, you now just floating all around us if you look into PCs the most common one is your x86 and AMD 64 and then we have on the mobile side we have ARM on the server side there's a war going on between ARM 64 and AMD 64 um, so even the Linux kernel has a bunch of instruction sets that are capable uh, that are upstreamed and you can just boot Linux on them going from alpha to arc to arm arm 64 CCX Coming back to CSKY, CSKY is one of the latest and possibly the last instruction set to be added uh, inside the Linux kernel and yeah it's just a completely different instruction set that came out of China and um, just there was just a big uh, And it's kind of in the process of being uh, implemented in the Linux kernel. Most of, most of it is done. Some of the board specific and software specific stuff is still remaining. But uh, that should soon be done. So what you end up with is um, the last architecture. And the reason it's the last one is because most of the companies that are not using ARM or x86 already have already you know gone ahead and uh, joined the risk 5 foundation so uh, what it looks like that these three are the major architectures that are going to push the industry forward uh, starting with arm x86 and risk 5 with x86 now kind of losing its steam uh, because it's the only CISC uh, instruction sets that that is still out there uh, and uh, just making its way and uh, starting with ARM and PowerPCs, the, those are the two most prominent risk based uh, risk uh, instruction set, reduced instruction set uh, ISA. And um, RISC V is just an open source instruction set architecture that, that came along a few years back and is kind of catching up the steam. So, yeah, CSKY is definitely one of the last ones to be added. Now no one is sure, maybe something better comes up and people decide to add that, who knows. But uh, surprisingly, when a new instruction set comes out, it's usually implemented only on the FPGA, uh, like RISC-V is right now, and all their development kits are extremely expensive. And a lot of the more mature uh, instruction set architectures uh, still have very expensive kits. Uh, for example, PowerPC starts at around 1000 USD um, and some of the other ones that are uh, extremely expensive because they aren't that popular. CSKY on the other hand, uh, you can actually buy 
uh, it cheaper or at the same price of a Raspberry Pi, but you get an entirely new instruction set to play with. Uh, and this is what we're talking about here. This is the C Sky Dev Board. Uh, it is powered by the national chip uh, GX six six zero five S SOC. Um, and we'll talk about what what the performance is. Not that much, but uh, and how it is. So let's take a look at the Dev Board itself. All right. So let's finally take a look at the C Sky Board and this is it that's that's all there is to it it's a tiny little uh, board looks like a microcontroller to be honest but if you see clearly the there is an stm32 microcontroller right here and um, it's almost the size of the main soc which is the uh, national gx 6605s you can see that clearly there um, and even the SOC, if it's not quad pack, it's actually not uh, B, BGA, and uh, uh, and you can see like it only has the pins on the four corners rather than the bottom. So that's the chip. It has a few things which we'll go through. But on the board we have the HDMI port, two USB 2.0 ports, and these can be used for boot or storage or whatever or keyboard. Like these are two generic. Uh, USB 2 ports. We have a COM port which is actually a UART which is controlled by this FTDI chip. I'm assuming that's FTDI. Uh, we have a JTAG port which uses the C Sky uh, C Link yeah. um, JTAG debugger which is programmed into this STM32. That's why this exists. Uh, we have a few GPIO pins here, few LEDs here, um, and a few buttons. On the back side, we have absolutely nothing. This is completely bare. Uh, th there are some traces, but apart from that, there is not a whole lot. The whole uh, PCB acts as a heat sink, so you can see that pad here, and you can see a little bit of solder there. And the uh, SOC's bottom side, apart from the pins, is basically a big, large heat sink. And this does get hot. So it's not an extremely fast um, microcontroller or uh, CPU by any means. Uh, this is running at around 500 odd um, megahertz. So not even a full gigahertz, uh, half a gigahertz. And this then tends to also have a VPU in there, which is not enabled in the kernel, I think. There's a VPU in there, so you can decode videos uh, in 1080p. There's an HDMI controller in there which is enabled in one of the kernel. Um, we'll talk about what the kernel situation is right here. So the HDMI is right now hard coded to 720, uh, 1280 by 720p, which is kind of weird considering it is actually capable of 1080p resolution or lower resolution. Just the bootloader when it, when the system boots up sets up the HDMI resolution and that's why you get the fixed resolution so that's kind of weird there that means it's not a very complicated HDMI controller it's pretty simple but then it's controlled by the closed source bootloader so you can't go ahead and modify that so you have that and then um, there is also as I said you can see there's no RAM chip the RAM itself is built in uh, to the chip uh, so uh, unlike the Raspberry Pi earlier ones used to have the RAM chip physically on top of the SOC uh, this actually has the 64 megabytes which is a very tiny amount of RAM uh, directly in the chip so it's a DDR2 64 megabyte of memory and then you have this this is a tiny little uh, SPI flash F just for megabytes uh, it contains the bootloader and a special OS which we'll talk about in a second. So that's about it when you come to the physical look of the board. There's not much doing. Uh, you know the buttons are nice and it's a really uh, board that's available for cheap from Alibaba. Yeah, not much to it. Powers by uh, Powered by 5 volts and with the HDMI connected and a keyboard connected it went to a max of 0.5 uh, amps and then with like a couple other things connected 0.6 uh, 
amp stops uh, with like a ethernet controller uh, and a usb to ethernet module and everything else so i ended up connecting to the internet and doing wonderful wonderful stuff with it um all right so the kernel situation uh, it's getting upstream the board itself is not upstream so you cannot just grab the vanilla kernel and run it um the architecture is upstream the board is getting us upstream pretty soon so that's exciting uh, on the current operating system things there's a build root uh, available so you can download that uh, build root source and then compile it which if you enable the HDMI uh, it will give you kernel 4.9 because that's where it's uh, enabled so they have a custom kernel 4.9 which has the HDMI output if you don't want the HDMI output and you want only the UART you can go up to kernel 1.6 of sorry 4.16 and then 4.19 for the uh, HDMI 4.16 for uh, the non-HDMI build uh, mainline we are still waiting on that so yeah the GCC is completely com capable for uh, CSKY cross compile that's what it uses and apart from that uh, let's boot it up for the first time so there are two ways to boot up I said that the SPI flash has a special OS so if you boot it for the first time without anything connected uh, and only the display connected it's boot it boots up to this real-time OS called um, ECOS or ECOS um, which is an open source and a GNU licensed uh, real-time OS uh, and I'm assuming that's what booting up and once that boots up it uh, runs into like a movie player mode where you can uh, plug in your USB drive it detects it and it's all controlled by these buttons here so you can select the USB drive and boot into that so it can play back 1080p and here I am playing back Big Bug Bunny at 1080p and it works just fine so it's kind of the 720p downscale 1080p situation because the HDMI resolution is hard locked to 720p but nonetheless that works and uh, what you get is a pretty neat uh, like a movie player I guess and that uses the VPU that's inbuilt to the SOC uh, and apart from that you can uh, also use the keys to navigate uh, and you know, play pause and do that kind of stuff so that's interesting so once you boot the boot it from a USB drive uh, you, the, there is a USB image available if you don't want to build everything on your own uh, you can plug in that USB image so it works uh, the onboard bootloader which is kind of it, it I can't help but notice that it's based on U-Boot but it's not because it's entirely closed source and it, there are subtle differences but it's technically based on your boot uh, from the looks of it um, and then you can actually and they have modified it a fair bit on top of that so the U boot boots the kernel and then the kernel boots up that's it it's as simple the kernel lives in a fat 32 partition you can have pretty much anything in there other than the kernel just to boot it like bare metal boot it uh, or boot like a chain load u boot or something weird like that from there but yeah just directly booting the kernel it boots kernel 4.9 or 4.16 depending upon your build and then the root fs it's in the ext4 partition so that boots up as well and um, it is a very minimal linux build there isn't much to it there's no even resize 2 fs wasn't there so it's a basic build root build and it just works so there is python in there and you can go ahead and try that out the um, uname a gives you what you would expect uh, you know kernel 4.9 and then based on c sky uh, top is very useful uh, again each because it's just a small 500 megahertz cpu everything is kind of a decent amount of load onto it so even running python you can see it consumes of some amount of CPU in there so on to the Python demo so you can go ahead there is a pygpio demo a folder in the default image 
uh, in there you can go ahead and execute that and once it's done you can see the top shows it and uh, once you look on your board there are these four LEDs that blink in a circulating pattern so and that's about it that's what my experience with this board has been so far I'm eagerly waiting for the mainline kernel implementation uh, all the patches are in there you can see them uh, but it's still not merged uh, so I'm not sure how uh, you know so we are still waiting on that uh, apart from that yeah a neat so I mean I honestly wouldn't have been interested in this board if it's not for like a brand new architecture because usually if you as I said before if you get something that has a brand new architecture it's expensive and this was like cheap so I just bought it to experiment with it and it's, it's fine uh, there's very limited stuff you can do in 64 megabytes uh, again it's not meant for general purpose computing this is very very strictly embedded only situation here so uh, we'll see where the story goes uh, once everything's upstream I might look take a look back at this and you know, make a couple more videos on it who knows so that's about it thank you so much for watching uh, make sure to hit that bell icon uh, and hit that subscribe button I have no idea why YouTube makes you all do that but if you want to stay updated that's what you have to do and um, yeah I'll have my social media link in the description follow me on there I usually put cool stuff out there as well some of the things that don't make into a proper video um, but yeah that's it thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next one